Oh yeah, so by decent I mean uh, in the past uh, two, three years. Uh, the latest paper is from last year. So uh, I thought uh, uh, Henry would spend more time for introducing uh, digital brain uh, quantum mechanics. So I didn't prepare too many introduction slides, but uh, hopefully this audience knows uh, uh, that model well. So I hope uh, you, you can uh, follow what I will talk about. And uh, uh, so I, I will uh, give you an uh, introduction of uh, recent numerical result on digital brain matrix model. And uh, this is, uh, but the, the mainly at least in the first part, uh, I will uh, uh, discuss uh, that model in the context of uh, Maradasena type duality. And the most famous example is ads CFT duality, which uh, claims that the type 2B string on ADS5 process 5 is equivalent to D plus one dimensional and maximally supersymmetric amyls. And it's a kind of a, a cousin or sibling of QCD. So our hope is you know, we can use a new medical uh, method to study this side to describe gravity non perturbatively And more generally, uh, we don't have to uh, uh, use a three plus one dimensional theory and the ADS5. And uh, soon after Maradasena's first paper, uh, Itzaki, Maradasena, Zoin, Shine, and Yakirovich wrote a paper which claims that a P plus one dimensional theory, this P is spatial dimension and one is time dimension. Uh, this model can be dual to type 2A or 2B string around the black P brain background. And if you take P equals to three, this side becomes a CFT, and this uh, side becomes a, a D3 brain Geometry, which is asymptotically it is five process five. So this includes the uh, original this shift duality as a special case. And uh, when P is zero or one or two or three, this side uh, can be defined as uh, in principle at least uh, using a lattice regularization. And they claim that the P larger than three is also okay, but then this side becomes a cutoff theory. So uh, uh, meaning it becomes less clear, so I want to uh, focus on the uh, lower dimensional case where uh, the this side is uh, well defined. But uh, particularly if we take p equals to zero, so no spatial dimension plus one time direction, then it's not even QFT, it's just a quantum mechanics. But still, uh, uh, seen from the dual, uh, quant uh, dual, uh, quantum gravity point of view, uh, in lower dimension. It's totally fine. And actually, I, I would say that the uh, lower dimensional example can, can have even richer uh, dynamics and phase structure. But uh, numerically, this side becomes uh, a lot more tractable. And uh, we can have a hope that we can solve this side numerically. Okay. And uh, I, I still claim that <laughs> this is sort of uh, uh, relative of QCD, so we can borrow a lot of numerical techniques which was developed, much, uh, hoping uh, uh, people try to solve the uh, QCD. And uh, I want, in this talk, I want to give you some overview of recent result. And first, I will give you precision test via Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, I think uh, uh, many of you, uh, at least, uh, uh, partly know uh, this result. And uh, this part may not be surprising. Uh, essentially, we claim that, oh, this duality really works well. But then uh, I want to give you some new physics insight. So we, we were trying to do very precise test. At the same time, we saw some deviation from what we expected. And it seems that this model had a new phase, which we didn't expect before. So precise test is done by comparing the confined phase of this model and black hole. And it seems that we found the confinement phase. And we want to claim that this confinement can be related to M theory. Oh, sorry, sorry. I just forgot to uh, delete this because uh, I'm reusing the slide, which I used to clock in token cell. <laughs> so uh, just forget about this part. OK, so it consists of three parts. And uh, so this is a paper by Itzaki, Marta Sena, Zonenshine, and Yankirovich. And in this paper, uh, they uh, 
give some detail of the proposed duality. And if we look at the V0 blame part of their paper, uh, they say that, uh, you know, as, as in a standard ABS GFT, uh, strong coupling and large N should correspond to uh, supergravity. And one over N correction, or one over coupling, two first coupling correction should describe a, a stringy correction. And the first coupling lambda has a dimension of mass to the power three in this case. Because it's, so it's, it's Yamino theory, but not in four dimension, then uh, the first coupling has a mass dimension. Then uh, this lambda is a sort of analog of lambda QCD in uh, case of QCD. So this lambda gives a, a typical energy scale of the system. And when we say something is uh, like a higher energy or lower energy, we should uh, uh, talk about in the unit, talk about the, you know, whether some uh, quantity is dimensional or quantity is large or small in the unit of lambda. And this lambda times e to the minus three is dimensionless combination. And this works as the uh, effective uh, coupling constant. So lower energy and uh, stronger coupling are equivalent. And they say that, okay, so in this sense, if we go to strong coupling and large end, we can uh, see uh, agreement with the supergravity. And uh, deviation from that, uh, that limit could, uh, should describe stringy correction. And the uh, dual is black zero blade in type 2A supergravity, and the metric is given in terms of this two-foot coupling lambda and uh, uh, N of SUM. And we just use that dictionary and use the Bekenstein Hawking formula. And we can show that the energy in this case should be 7.4. It's a 7.41 something, you know, it's calculated number times n to the n square times a very strange power of lambda times a very strange power of the temperature. And you may wonder why such a strange power can appear, but uh, <laughs> the issue here, point here is that this lambda has mass dimension, so naive dimensional counting doesn't work. And uh, we consider a uh, fifth large end limit where like uh, en temperature is fixed to be order one and energy increases like n square. And uh, when energy is n square, uh, entropy is also n square and that uh, uh, in, a, in a large end theory, such phase will be the confined phase. And in this paper, basically they talked only about the confined phase, okay? And we check if we can see the confined phase and if the confined phase uh, uh, reproduces this uh, behavior. And in uh, our, uh, uh, in the slide, I will just set lambda equals to one from now on. And if, if we, if you like, you can always restore this lambda so that the uh, dimension matches. <laughs> so later you will see that this energy is 7.4 n squared times t to the strange power. Dimension doesn't seem too much, but uh, this is a convention. So, so supergravity limit, supergravity should be good at low temperature for strong coupling, and the way E over divided by N squared should become 7.4 times 2 to the 2.8. And we can also easily calculate that, that calculate the high temperature behavior of the uh, matrix model, because it's just a uh, weak coupling and we can use a, a super, I don't know, classical treatment. And we can show that at the high temperature, we should get E over N squared proportional to 60. But then uh, at stronger coupling, we should see huge, large deviation from this, and uh, this should be the uh, precise description. But it's a you know, highly non-trivial question whether we can actually see this from matrix model. If we cannot re reproduce this from matrix model, then uh, Maradas duality uh, would be wrong. It's really a good test. And uh, furthermore, it, important thing here is we are talking about finite temperature physics, so we cannot uh, rely on protection by supersymmetry. Uh, like, uh, you, you can just... Uh, just one form of, I mean, the fact that... So, you, you, you go to classical scale. theory and temperature is only scale, so right. it's uh, almost uh, conformal, yes. Yeah. So, it's almost just dimensional counting. 
More precisely, you can uh, easily calculate expectation value of P square, and then you can uh, also use the VDL theorem to calculate potential right. energy. And this model, uh, as far as I know, first, uh, Kabat and Rifschitz try to reproduce this using some sort of uh, mean field method. And uh, in my case, so Nishimura-san uh, uh, read this paper, and uh, I think he thought it's very interesting. And uh, he, but he thought that maybe we should use a better method, which is Monte Carlo. And uh, I, I was, at, around that time, I was learning uh, Monte Carlo from Kawaii-san. Uh, Nishimura-san noticed that, and then he recruited me for his project. And uh, that's how uh, we started uh, studying this with a uh, team of these four people. And around the same time, at the time, we didn't know about uh, Cattero and Wiseman, and later, many people also tried to study this. Anyway, so we, this is the target, okay? And I just show the latest result. So that I'm showing the result, uh, which is a combination of these two paper from 2016 and 2022. So this is a gravity dual, 7.4 times t to the 2.8. And also that result was for BFSS model. But we can also uh, introduce a flux deformation and we can go to BMN model, uh, which probably David likes a lot. <laughs> and, uh, but if, if a flux parameter is very small, correction is very small. Correction to uh, BFSS is very small. Okay. And uh, such a correction is uh, estimated by Coster and uh, collaborators uh, from gravity side. Okay, so uh, in uh, 2016, we studied BFSS model. In uh, 2022, uh, for the technical reason I will explain, we used the BMN matrix model instead of BFSS. But either way, uh, these points are the large N and the continuum extrapolation from matrix model. This is super gravity. And if you go to a much higher temperature, uh, we, you can, we can easily see that six times T is liquid. And we can see that a simulation data go very close to, asymptotically close to this uh, uh, gravity estimate. And this is a zoom, zoom in of this region. And uh, this is the fit, orange line is the fit which take into account the uh, stringy effect. And it seems that including the stringy effect, uh, matrix model and the gravity are totally consistent. And uh, there are several, uh, technical uh, uh, issues to be overcome in order to uh, do this kind of simulation. And the biggest problem is a uh, flood direction. Uh, so this is a Lagrange uh, I mean, action of a D0 brain matrix model. And uh, so we have a uh, uh, momentum square part and the interaction potential term is committed as squared. And classically, uh, if, if we uh, take, uh, take a diagonal configuration of X, this uh, uh, potential is zero. And with supersymmetry, this flood direction can survive even at the quantum level. And uh, actually, so if we naively calculate the partition function, then uh, we can take eigenvalue of X to be very large while keeping the uh, matrices to be almost commuting. And uh, eigenvalues can run to infinity, and that part can give a large contribution to partial function. So partial function is uh, not really convergent. So we have to uh, somehow regularize it. And what we found is that uh, in string, string theory side, so Itsaki, Marudasena, Dorensha, and Yankirovich, these people are talking about the uh, duality between matrix model and uh, black hole solution in uh, string theory. In a, as a black hole solution, they are talking about a, a black brain with a lam, n unit of Ramon Ramon chan. All eigenvalues are in a bound state. And we have to think what is the counterpart in a matrix model, and that's clearly bound state of all eigenvalues. And then gravity side, uh, when we take large end limit and just use uh, uh, Einstein gravity, then there is no instability. So that would mean uh, if the reality is correct, if we take a, uh, if we take a large end limit, then a uh, bound state should be very stable. And that's actually what we see. If we start with uh, zero, x equals zero, and use this uh, trace xm square 
to uh, detect uh, possible runaway uh, behavior. Then when uh, it's just a cut schematic cartoon, but when n is small, like four, then uh, at some point it grows and we see plateau, but at some point some eigenvalue run away to infinity and then trace x squared diverges. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so if we don't have a fermion flat direction is lifted, so there's no such problem. And, uh, but if we increase uh, n, then gradually this uh, uh, you know, metastable uh, state becomes more and more stable. And when n is sufficiently large, we don't really see runaway behavior. And we can use this plateau to estimate the energy of that metastable state, uh, both in gravity side and the matrix model side. And we can compare them. And the more serious issue is a sign problem. And so this is a partition function, and if we integrate it to fermion, we get to Papian. This is uh, complex in general. And IKKT model has the same uh, issue. And in the case of IKKT model, it seems that uh, if you forget about the uh, phase of Papian, result is completely different. You, ha you need, really need Papian. Maybe that uh, Nishimura-san will uh, explain in his talk. But somewhat mis mysteriously, in the case of uh, this D0 brain matrix model, even if we replace this Papian with its absolute value, forgetting about phase, whenever we can estimate the effect of uh, dropping phase, we, we just see the same result. Whether we use a Papian or absolute value of a Papian, we get the same result, at least for energy. And we don't really know why this is the case. Uh, in, general, in general, there is no reason that it's real positive, and you can actually, for smaller, even for smaller uh, metric size, you can just uh, in, you put a substitute to random value of A or X, and you, you in general get a complex value. Uh, first, it can depend on the detail of lattice regularization, but uh, I think it's uh, ultimately related to uh, big rotation to Euclidean signature. And it, it is the feature of uh, uh, continuum theory. Yeah. But it's all, all, at the same time, it's also true that in uh, many the values of temperature or N, somehow mysteriously, this puppy is very close to real positive. Or, or depending, also it depends on boundary condition, whether you use periodic or anti-periodic. With anti-periodic boundary condition, very often phase is like, you know, uh, like uh, the imaginary part divided by the other part is like 0 0.01, which doesn't really affect the answer. We don't really know, uh, but uh, of course, if it takes very low temperature, very large end, we cannot really numerically estimate Papian. So it may be the case that uh, such a replacement may actually give us a wrong result, but whenever we can, tr we can estimate the effect of the sign, we get the same answer. So we assume or we hope that uh, uh, replacing this Papian with the uh, absolute value is okay, and we do simulation. Otherwise, we cannot do simulation. And so, and result looks consistent with the gravity expectation, so we think it's correct, but we don't have a full theoretical justification. So it's desirable to have cross checks. For example, the bootstrap does not rely on, uh, it does not have a sign problem. So if, if uh, uh, we can use a bootstrap, like, like Henry explained, and we can get the, reproduce what I will explain from now, that will be really good. Or maybe he, he can get uh, some bound which uh, falsify our simulation. That's also good if you can do that. So I, I think so. I, I show I show. Uh, I think I, I can show you interesting result for, uh, based on Monte Carlo simulation. But this is a potential loophole. Okay. But I think this is the only strategy. And uh, I'm giving a talk, but uh, a lot of uh, uh, contribution comes from uh, other people as well. Uh, initially, I wrote a simulation code a long time ago. After that, these people uh, improved my code and uh, uh, spend a lot of time. Uh, simulating uh, that code on a big uh, machine, and they got really nice results. 
and uh, Enrico and Evan contributed a lot for 2016 paper and the 2022 paper to uh, between Degen's book Germany, Norbert and the Stratos uh, had really big contributions. And so let's start with the 2016 paper result. And we used a machine called Vulcan. I, I, I don't know why it's called Vulcan, but uh, yeah, clearly coming from this person. And this was in a river more. And uh, uh, this machine was in a classified area of the uh, river more. And all the American citizens could go and see. And Evan went there and checked that the machine actually did this. So I, I think. <laughs> so I, I think we actually did uh, use a real computer. Okay, this machine uh, doesn't exist anymore, so yeah, it's, it's gone. And uh, so the size of the job is like uh, typically at the most 4,000 core parallel. But we have to study a lot of N and the temperature and the lattice size in order to take continuum limit, large end limit at each temperature. So it's much smaller than a uh, lattice QCD simulation, but uh, still, uh, that's something we cannot do in a local cluster. Okay, anyway, so we studied this, uh, N equals 16, 24, 32 at the time, and uh, we took large N and continuum limit at each temperature, and these were the simulation results of the algorithm. And this is a super graphy result. Ah, and the, these uh, lines are uh, fit before uh, this 2016 paper. The 2016 paper gave a better uh, result. And uh, this is a string theory prediction. So this coefficient and these powers are known, but like this B and the C and the one by the correction are not uh, known. And this part is supergravity and these are string alpha prime correction. And the first, our first uh, uh, goal was to see if we could reproduce this 7.4. And reproducing this power is more challenging. So this was our first target. And so we did this three parameter fit and we could get the result which is consistent, 7.41. And as a bonus, we could also determine this B, which sort of give a prediction for string equality. And also as a non-trivial, uh, somewhat non-trivial, uh, uh, test of uh, stringy correction. So, so we wanted to see if uh, this Maldasian type of duality can work, not just a super gravity level, but uh, including stringy correction. So we cannot introduce too many parameters. So we fix this coefficient using the uh, analytic result from gravity side. And we also assume this power, th this difference is, is 0 0.6. So, so we assume it's a kind of cheating, but we didn't want to have uh, four parameters. And if we use this weaking on that, then we could get P equals 4.6, which is consistent, this power. And of course, with more data, we can uh, do even a uh, more precise test. And uh, still, this, uh, how to get this? Yeah. So first, uh, 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 first uh, in, a, in a string theory side, there was a, a calculation there was a, a result that the stringy correction uh, in a type 2a supergravity should start with alpha prime cube and alpha prime fifth and then alpha prime six times. And you know, that the power was known, although the detail of the uh, uh, equation wasn't known. But then we can use that effective action uh, shown to cal uh, calculate uh, Bekenstein Hawking entropy. And then question is, so this alpha prime cube, so this is supergravity part. If correction is alpha prime cube, then this power should be determined so that this alpha prime divided by, uh, alpha prime divided by Schubert street radius squared, squared to the three should be leading correction, next to leading correction. And using the supergravity solution, we can uh, calculate the temperature dependence of this. And uh, so, and this was uh, p to the three over five to the three, I think. And this is how the difference between 14 over five and 23 over five was obtained. Anyway, but uh, here still, uh, 
departure from the supergravity was like 30%. We wanted to see if we can actually see supergravity. And then in retrospect, <laughs> uh, uh, what we had to do is very uh, simple. So instead of VFSS, we use BMN. And uh, already to, in 2014, Coster, Miguel Coster uh, in Porto and his collaborators estimated how big a correction could uh, appear. And when flux parameter mu is uh, in the next slide, is 0.5, you know, result is almost indistinguishable. Okay, so if we introduce, go to BMN, and if that makes simulation easier, then we could more easily check the duality. And the BMN matrix model is a one parameter deformation of the D0 brain matrix model. So let's call this leading part as BFSS. And then this is B, uh, flux deformation proposed by Bernstein, Maradasen, and Nastase. And here the detail is not really important now, but uh, you know, we have some uh, parameter mu. And this, uh, we have a mass term that will uh, lift uh, flood direction. Okay. And so it's a supersymmetric deformation. It's really a nice deformation. And it, although it lifts the flood direction, and although it introduces uh, you know, other non-trivial vacuum, the, this uh, lift, that uh, effect of lifting flood direction is really uh, big enough so that this trivial vacuum becomes very stable. And without going to n equals 16 or 32, already at n equals to eight, at very, even at a very low temperature region, we could see very stable simulation. We didn't have to go to very large n just to stabilize the simulation. And, and if n is smaller, of course, the simulation is much easier. And uh, we could go to much lower temperature with more statistics, and we could get this result. So at the of 0.5, this is an estimated correction to supergravity. And this is a fit take into account string correction. And this is our estimate of finite mu correction. And it's you know, almost negligible, smaller than error bar. And this was 2016 result. And then now, because we have a better control of flood direction, we can uh, make uh, error bar smaller. And it seems that convergence is really, there's no doubt that uh, supergravity is not reproducible. This is a result from 2020. Yes, yes, and that's a potential loophole. Other than that, there is no ambiguity. Yeah. Uh, that's a more challenging issue. And for example, we want to introduce a probe quark separating one eigenvalues. And we want to do that, but we haven't done that yet. So I think in this phase, uh, everything is in black hole. Yeah, uh, but uh, st still we can uh, introduce, uh, separate one of the eigenvalues and can detect the geometry, I think. And also in this confinement phase, actually only part of the eigenvalues from black hole and uh, what you say can work more precisely, I think. So, 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 at, at, so, so there are two things. So if mu becomes large, uh, then correction to uh, BFSS limit becomes large, but the simulation becomes more stable. So we wanted to find sweet spot. Yeah, and uh, at the mu equals, below mu equals 0 0.5, uh, we saw uh, more frequent uh, runaway behavior. And we could, uh, so below mu equals 0 0.5, it was hard. But uh, at the mu equals 0 0.5, fraction was already very small, so we didn't go further. And also, I say that the below mu equals 0 0.5 in stability setting, but that's statement for the confined phase. I will explain confined phase. In confined phase, uh, uh, even with mu equals 0, we could do stable simulation. Uh, 
Uh, so if we go to fat, so we can estimate the uh, uh, value of tracex squared for fuzzy sphere, and that is uh, significantly smaller. And typically, like uh, th there are Monte Carlo study of uh, fuzzy sphere in slightly different model by Nishimura san, and he put. Uh, so if you look at his paper, tracex squared, if there is a tunneling, it jumps, but uh, we didn't see such a behavior. So I, this is uh, Monte Carlo time. So, so in Monte Carlo simulation, you con change the configuration gradually, right? And it's the first configuration, second configuration, third configuration, and so on. And at some point, there is time. Again. In our in our case, uh, in uh, like uh, we we collect like uh, ten thousand configurations, and we just uh, fluctuate just fluctuate around somebody. But if a fuzzy sphere appeared, then you would see this kind of jump. But we didn't see. Or more, more precisely, we saw such a jump, but we didn't study that. We didn't include such parameter either. Okay. It depend on mu and n and the temperature. So, so these are the points I showed. And uh, we found, uh, got uh, this uh, data point. Compared to this line, energy is significantly smaller. And what is happening? And we want to claim that this is a confined phase. And the signature we observed is like this. For n equals to 10 and 16, and mu equals to 0, this is the initial condition. OK, t is 0 0.2, and this L is lattice size. Then, like you can see that uh, R, sorry, R2, R, R squared is a tracex squared. So it comes from zero, and then we see some plateau. So it's a stable. But around in this case, around here, runaway behavior is set mean. Okay, then we, we, we don't really, uh, we discuss this part because eigenvalue is running away to infinity. But then, polar group is coming now and fluctuate at a very small value. Occasionally, it goes larger, but it comes back. And if you go to n equals to 16, we don't see runaway behavior anymore. And the Prakov loop is uh, very stably fluctuating close to zero. This is a typical signature of a confined phase. And if we look at the energy and see at each x value of n, if we take continuum limit, so L is lattice size, n equals to infinity is continuum limit. And then if we extrapolate E over n square to continuum limit, this is consistent with zero. If we, at each fixed lattice size, if we take large n limit, that n equals to 10, 12, 12, 16, and infinity, large n limit of a product group, this equals to zero. And it would mean uh, if in a large n continuum limit, both energy and the product group are zero. And here, so I said zero, but uh, uh, you know, but uh, how close to zero? So if we use this formula from supergravity, the energy must be 0 0.0818, which is uh, 0 .0, which is around here, which is significantly larger than this. this. This is clearly zero compared to this number. It cannot be uh, the confined phase, which is we have to uh, black zero brain. And uh, if we extrapolate uh, the value of a product group from a high temperature data, we, we have to put some angles. But we would expect the value of product group to be 0 0.5 around this temperature, 0 0.2. But it's clearly zero. 0 0.5 is high enough. <laughs> this is clearly confined phase, clearly different from the confined phase. And actually, you may wonder why here suddenly we have much bigger error bar compared to a bit higher temperature. And actually, already here, we saw tunneling between two phases. We see two, uh, two state signal, so like, like this kind of tunneling. <laughs> If you look at the energy of particle loop, we see this kind of uh, two-state signal 
And we all, all, only took this part to estimate this. This is the reason here about the video. Part of the jump, yes. Uh, yeah, this uh, will come in, uh, uh, I, I will explain that from now. And we can only give some uh, speculation and uh, we need more uh, investigation. So it's somewhat speculated, but if you go back to uh, this paper, it's like another thing that's mentioned in Akiro Beach, they say that, okay, so type 2A block zero brain should be good to description around the proof limits. But if we go to uh, fix N and go into lower temperature, effective coupling grows. And also expectation value of Dilaton at the horizon scale can grow. So that would mean 11 dimension opens up. Then uh, uh, 10 dimensional black hole should first be lifted to black string in 11 dimension. But if 11 dimension becomes even bigger, then it should pitch off. The Gregory Laframe instability should set in, and we should get 11 dimensional black hole. Yeah, okay, I have to finish. I have to run. Okay, so, so, so they say that, okay, so first, our, Around here we see uniform string, and then gradually we see no uniform string, and then black hole should appear. So this direction is M-theory circle, and these two lines should be identical. Okay. And this is Gregory Laflamme transition. But uh, already that story is, uh, so, so they claim that M-theory should be described. But the connection to original BFSS proposal is not clear here. So it may be different from original BFSS proposal. So in uh, this uh, Itzaki, Marzasena, Donetsha, and Yankiro Beach, implicitly studied bound state of all the And we are explicitly uh, looking only at such configurations. So we are studying bound state of all the brains. In the case of original BFSS proposal, you know, they uh, imagine that the uh, brains are separated and this matrix is considered, but here, we're talking about a bunch of all the brains. And uh, if energy becomes, so ground state should be BPS black zero brain or it's uh, M3 uplift. And the candidate, if gravity dual exists for confined phase, what we can imagine is gravit graviton gas in the dimension Add it to M3 uplift of uh, BPS zero brain. Okay, because energy is zero. Because if we have a black hole, energy is still not zero. However, uh, we can make a consistent picture like this. Uh, so, first, in the first limit, people believe that only the confined phase exists and it's dual to type two uh, black zero brain. But our proposal is that at any uh, non zero temperature, all find phase should exist as well, but if you compare free energy, this the confined phase always has smaller free energy. This is global minimum, this is only local minimum. And if we go to large but finite end, we can connect it to what uh, Itzaki, Marzasena, Zonesha, and Yankirovich claim. So they say that uh, if we go to very low energy, then uh, 11 dimension opens up and the black string in 11 dimension and the black hole in 11 dimension appears. And then gradually uh, black hole uh, evaporates to grab young guy. But uh, typically, it's a bit tricky because it's a black hole, 11 dimensional black hole boosted along compact dimension. But if the effect of boost is small, it's just 11 dimensional superset black hole, which have negative density. So uh, temperature has to go up as energy goes up. And uh, actually, phase uh, with uh, negative specificity corresponds to free energy maximum. So there can be two free energy minima separated by free energy, one free energy maximum. And if we believe their argument, this turning point should uh, go closer to closer to zero as we go to larger n. And I think this point where like a 11 dimensional graviton gas turns to uh, 11 dimensional black hole, this temperature can, can go up with N. And I don't have time to explain, but uh, uh, there is, so we obtained this uh, uh, argument looking at some analogous uh, physics in four dimensional super and uh, Maybe in a question time or maybe after the talk, if you're interested, I can explain more. <laughs> this picture is a bit harder to see, so, uh, 
I try to describe the same thing a bit more in the bigger picture. So here we have the confined phase, which is equal to type two a black zero brain, and we saw tunneling to confined phase. But we believe that this is happening because the even dimensional black string or black hole is sitting between these two phases, uh, and uh, as a free energy maximum. And it's so, also there are two free energy minima, so we can see two state signal. So these two phases, two, two phases correspond to two minima, and the maximum is somewhere around here. Okay. And uh, if we believe gravity analysis, this part has to go to zero as n grows, and the critical temperature where. Uh, so be, beyond be, this is analogous to the Hawking page. So above this temperature. This is dominant solo. And below this temperature, this is dominant solo. This critical temperature should also go to zero in the larger limit, I think. And this temperature where the even dimensional black hole is formed probably goes to infinity. And of course, it's highly non trivial. And uh, if other groups can uh, study the same system and see consistent results, that would be very useful. And so, so this is a plotable free energy versus energy. So we have two minima, the so type two a black hole and the eleven dimensional Gaussian gas, and in between black hole or black string in eleven dimension. This is this is part of the phase transition. Oh, this is my final slide. Matrix model and type two is super string agrees perfectly in the confined phase. And uh, there, duality is supported, including the stringy corrections. And uh, at that point, still, we are just uh, checking what people uh, already believe to be true, I guess. But uh, more interestingly, we found some phase transition between type 2a and the M theory. For the phase which is likely to be dual to type 2a and likely to be a dual of the M theory. And in that M theory phase, I think this describes the M theory, but I'm not sure if original BFSS proposal is valid there. We must think more carefully. And the uh, interesting thing is uh, that the confined phase itself is probably graviton gas, but as a free energy maximum, 11 dimensional uh, sheet black hole can be sitting there. And uh, of course, we can also study that phase. So for example, if we have, uh, if we do this kind of simulation, that then if we plot number of configurations as a function of a product group, for example, we should see two peaks and one deep. And this deep, I believe, is 11 dimensional black hole. Once we identify the deep, we introduce some uh, constraint so that only this uh, region range is sampled, and we can study the one dimensional black hole. So I think we can actually study the one dimensional Schwarz sheet black hole with negative space Q. So if we can actually study it, it's a really useful tool to completely understand what is happening when the black hole evaporates. This is my conclusion. Thank you very much.